This is a graph showing the demographics of Miami as of 2021, and it's insane when you look at the Hispanic population compared to other groups in the area. Although the total number of Latino residents of Florida has yet to reach that of California and Texas, the population of the Miami metropolitan area has expanded at an incredibly fast rate from the 1950s to the present day, and much of the growth has been due to the dramatic increase in Latin Americans. In fact, the city has basically established itself as a Latin America within the United States. Within Miami, 51% of the city's population were born overseas, and 66% of its residents are estimated to speak Spanish at home. The language is present from the moment you arrive in Miami's international airport. The radio announcers report the local news in Cuban-accented Spanish, billboards tout Spanish-speaking personal injury lawyers, and Spanish shows and church services play on TV. In many shops, restaurants, and Ubers, you're addressed in Spanish first, or even exclusively. After all, it's estimated that only 25% of the population of the city are native English speakers. This highly concentrated demographic in one location is quite unique, even with America's reputation as a melting pot of different people and cultures. It's tempting to think of this as a recent event, but some of the reasons behind the city's reputation for becoming a new Latin America actually date back for some time. And while we may associate Latin America immigration to USA with illegal crossings at the Mexican border or with low-skilled work, the Hispanic population of Miami is also not quite what you may think of it in that regard. In Los Angeles, when you hear Spanish, it's often the language that waiters or the cutters doing your lawn speak in the background. In Miami, the people who own the restaurants and the lawns are the ones who speak Spanish. So how did Miami not only turn into a new Latin America, but establish itself as the place to be for aspiration and wealth within the Hispanic community? Well, two of the most crucial causes have been economics and the outcome of complex political events in Central and South America, which has pushed Latin Americans towards Florida. But first, it also helps to look at some history and context to understand why Miami in particular. Before the creation of an independent America, the state of Florida had existed as a colony of Spain after the explorer Juan Ponce de Leon had arrived there in 1513. The state was later ceded to America in 1819, and Miami at the time was regarded as a small frontier village populated by traders. But despite the state's long period under Spanish rule, Hispanic immigration to Florida only first began to pick up in the late 1880s, triggering the start of several waves. Among the first immigrants were Cubans and Puerto Ricans looking to move away from Spanish colonialism and Florida's close geographical proximity to Central America and the Caribbean made it a convenient destination. But economics played a big role as well as politics. Trade between the Spanish West Indies and Florida encouraged the migration of Puerto Rican and Dominican sugar plantation workers, and they were followed by Cubans as Florida also developed its own cigar-making industry. Although the initial levels of immigration were not as big as they are now, they began to form a language and cultural base in the Miami area that would later become significant and act as a halfway point into the largely English-speaking United States. As with many cases of ethnic or linguistic immigrant groups, new arrivals are likely to first settle in areas where similar communities already live, and this foundation would become stronger and more important as a second, more substantial wave of Hispanic immigration occurred from the 1960s onwards. It was the Cuban Revolution of 1959 that was perhaps the greatest catalyst in Miami's transformation. A new generation of Cubans began establishing themselves in the city, and unlike the previous Hispanic wave of the late 1800s, they were generally middle class, professional and educated people fleeing from the new socialist regime of Fidel Castro. Between 1961 and 1970, around 290,000 Cubans fled for Florida, and in the following decade, another 265,000 crossed the Florida Strait. By the end of the 1960s, Miami's Cuban expat population had exploded from around 10,000 to half a million. Since these were political refugees escaping from communism, the US government was at first keen to provide aid to the new arrivals and issued the Cuban Adjustment Act in 1966, making Cubans the only Latino group eligible for a green card after one year of living in the USA. After the failed Bay of Pigs invasion dashed hopes of overthrowing Castro, the Cuban exiles elected to stay in Miami. Many of the land-owning and professional class Cubans transported their business assets directly from Havana to escape Castro's nationalization policies and opened banks, restaurants, schools, and grocery stores to continue the life they had left behind. With a solid Cuban base now established, there was still one more mass wave of Cuban migration left, which began in the early 1980s with the Mariel Boatlift. Due to increasing economic trouble and decline in the living standards of Cuba, many Cubans tried to seek asylum at the embassies of South American countries including over 10,000 in the Peruvian embassy in Havana alone. Funnily enough though, 
Castro's government made a sudden announcement that those wishing to leave the country would not be stopped. So then came another 125,000 Cuban nationals fleeing on boats to Miami. The US government tried deterring the third wave of Cubans from arriving by repatriating some to the military base at Guantanamo Bay and pressuring the Cuban government to take them back. But loopholes in the American asylum laws also obligated the government to take in the Cubans and process their cases once they landed on American soil. By the end of the 1980s, Miami's population now stood at 26% Latin American, a majority of whom were Cuban. But Hispanic exiles to Miami weren't just limited to Cuban refugees. And as the city grew into a Spanish-speaking enclave in a close part of the US mainland, it began to serve as a magnet for other Latin American groups. Nicaraguans fleeing from the Marxist Sandinista government and the civil war that followed in the 1970s and 80s also chose Miami as a destination. Like the Cubans, the Nicaraguan exiles were generally members of high society and skilled workers who began founding businesses and transferring their commercial resources into the city. Further political problems in Central American nations like El Salvador and Guatemala also prompted further immigration into what was now a rapidly developing Latin city. Meanwhile, in the beginning of the 1990s, Colombia was deeply impacted by drug cartels, cocaine smuggling, political corruption and terrorism by parliamentary groups. Members of the professional class, the wealthy and relatives of politicians became targets for kidnapping by gangsters and cartel bosses. And this escalation of bloody violence prompted Colombians with financial resources and the means to travel to head for the relative closeness of Miami and South Florida. Although the situation in Colombia was improving by the mid-2000s, many of the Colombians who immigrated found the economic opportunities available in the US more appealing and chose to remain. And they were also joined by their relatives as flights between Miami and Colombia became more affordable and frequent. These groups were also joined by well-to-do Spanish-speaking immigrants from Peru, who were looking to escape terrorism and hyperinflation plaguing their country, and later by professional Argentinians who preferred the more stable economic climate of the United States. By 1990, it was estimated that around 400,000 Central and South Americans were now based in Florida, and this was leaving its economic mark on Miami by turning the city into a key business and commerce player in a now rapidly globalizing era. For example, if we look at the financial industry, the Cuban exiles were the ones who really began Miami's reputation today as an international banking hub and the financial capital of Latin America. A major consequence of political upheavals pushing affluent Latin Americans to Miami was that wealth migrated with them. Many domestic and world banks offered wealth management services to cater to newly arriving clients and chose to base their operations in Miami. By 2012, it was estimated that Miami had overtaken Los Angeles as having the highest concentration of immigrant-owned businesses, with 45% of businesses founded in the city being established and operated by a foreign-born national. With those language and economic foundations now set, we can now move to the present day and look at how this has influenced Miami's representation as a new Latin America. For example, imagine you're a Latin American businessman or a startup entrepreneur looking to expand your market. You have a location where there is a steady supply of audiences and consumers from similar backgrounds. You can network and make phone calls in Spanish to have the necessary infrastructure delivered. With flights to Central and South American cities relatively short, Miami now acts as a geographical bridge between Spanish and English culture if you wish to expand further. Similarly, if you are wealthy and concerned about political strife or devalued currency in your native country, Miami is still a Spanish-speaking but safer option to buy real estate and investment in. This may sound like something from a commercial, but with this sort of critical infrastructure that is catered towards people from similar backgrounds concentrated in one area, you can understand why Miami is now an attractive haven for affluent Hispanic people, especially when we combine the city's business-friendly altitude with the fact that the Mexican, Colombian, and Brazilian economies are forecast to grow. It makes sense to use the city as a place for business between the USA and South America and advertise it as the location for new and aspirational middle classes to make their name. But while many Hispanic immigrants have successfully built a new life in Miami, the situation hasn't always been a smooth one. Existing white residents in the city sometimes feel threatened by the new arrivals, with some choosing to leave Florida, while county commissions passed laws declaring that most government businesses must be done in English, although this was later repealed in 1993. Some of the Latin American arrivals also imported the political and social conflicts they had fled. In 1975, Cuban militant groups carried out over 30 bombing campaigns against suspected Castro supporters and communist spies. In the 1980s, 
Colombian drug cartels used Miami as a base to stage their activities in America, running illegal drug trades and money laundering operations through Miami banks and real estate. As well as carrying out violent assassinations in public, local criminal lawyers also made a living from defending suspected drug smugglers, and these instances put Miami on the map for the wrong reasons. Today, Miami's Cuban residents continue to make up much of the city's cultural, economic, and political establishments, with Colombians coming a close second. Politicians campaign in Spanish, promising to influence U.S. foreign policy toward their constituents' native or ancestral countries. Prominent American politicians like Marco Rubio grew up within Miami's Latin community, and Cuban-born Javier Suarez was elected mayor of the city in 1985, before his son Francis held the same title in 2017. Miami's Latin American population has now expanded to include a new generation of affluent Venezuelans who began spending more time in the city after the election of Hugo Chavez in 1999. Many Hispanics in Miami have now collectively come under the Latin American American term, as opposed to being defined by their national origins. After intermingling and intermarrying, while integrating themselves under the umbrella of the American dream, the more than 60 years of steady immigration from Spanish-speaking countries has even begun to influence the type of English being spoken there by locals, even non-Spanish speakers, with the newer generation developing an accent of speaking English with Spanish vowel sounds, grammatical structure, and rhythm. As Miami continues to remain an important economic zone and the city embraces the culture Hispanics bring with them, it's likely to continue developing as a center of commerce and as a Latin American cultural base within America. Thanks for watching.